How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and test this thing out. It's the Colob Rhino, basically. It's a fairly... it's not the newest mod, but I just... for what I've had it for a little while, I've just not got around to making an actual video on it. I had a little go with it in the live stream, I've messed around with it as well, and uh, yeah, I, I do quite like it. So, I've found a mission to go and do. I'm going to go and do the wooden bridge mission. It's more of just an excuse to go and drive these around, really. There's only one Colob, but um, I've got one of each, as in, like, there's two different gearboxes. So I'm going to go up there, grab some wood, take it down here... Uh, to the sawmill because then basically I need uh, eight planks of wood to build the wooden bridge but I've got no wood or anything at the sawmill yet so yeah kind of do a two in one take some logs to the uh, to the sawmill swap it for planks and then take the planks I'm gonna kind of go on a bit of a, a rougher route I did it a little while ago with the uh, in the Bruce so I know Bruce can cross this particular section of river and uh, yeah sort of see how well this does uh, as for setup wise and everything, uh, it's definitely got a few things I quite like. It, um, you can get the medium log cradle thing on the back of it, but then you can't have a trailer as well, which is a bit of a shame. But it can fit this long log setup on. It can also fit a, uh, a logging crane, like between basically at the back of where the loaf is. But it made fit in my loaf on a bit <laughs> more awkward, and I'm not going to lie, I'd rather take a loaf than a, uh, a logging crane. The thing is with this that I'll be able to show you later as well is it's bloody hard to tip basically it's, it's harder to tip than not to tip so I wasn't particularly worried about if my logs became unpacked and uh, yeah I'd need to restack them or whatever and like I said uh, yeah I'd rather just take a loaf <laughs> good old thick roof rack a roof rack with a winch so uh, yeah like I said there's two the reason I wanted to do two trucks was like the two gearboxes is uh, one of the gearboxes is some kind of special one and one uh, says the high range and it does say it's got an increased gear count and higher top speed I'm not sure if like they've modified the high range in the game but it appears to behave exactly like the high range does it felt a lot better and the reason why is because the special gearbox like I don't know you've seen it there jiggle a bit it is special but it's just more special needs than special edition if that makes sense like it a lot of the times once you let off the accelerator and even put the handbrake on it still keeps rolling forward a bit and then you go to put it in reverse and the tyres kind of jiggle and fight each other sometimes you go forward sometimes you go back and eventually it'll kind of the tyres I don't know the little war they're having between each other one side will win and then it'll start going mostly to be fair the, the way I'm trying to tell it to go but yeah there's a couple of times that can get a little bit awkward Um the Rhino I've got behind the yellow one I just sprayed it bright yellow make sure you can all see it <laughs> uh, yeah that's got the high range in so I kind of wanted to use that as well and I've got the 8 slot trailer on that because as much as I hate the 8 slot this is kind of a good test because it gets caught here and there this thing's definitely got a lot of muscle to it it's got the uh, you see there perfect example the gearbox was like fighting with each other I was in auto trying to go forwards and it started kind of jiggling backwards and going a bit mad so I've got me, uh, me long logs now Again with the gears, I'm flooring it. You can see the tyres kind of like... It's like the two outside axles are sort of... Appear to be uh, trying to do what you're telling them to do. But yeah, the two inner axles are just... I don't know. Like I said, it's like they're trying to fight each other or something. Um, yeah, low range of diffs on. So the diffs are like optional. They're not on all the time. It's not the end of the world. It's got quite a nice pace to it overall. I did this mission. I was trying to do this truck yesterday... And long story short, I just abandoned mission in the end. You can see there's a, uh, a TZ Taz on his side with some long logs and all the rest of it. I uh, I took that thing with me on the back of an 8 slot, but I'll show you quickly at the end like the setup I was going to run. But I just wasn't happy with the footage in the end. This thing was not helping the footage situation because it was doing that gearbox thing a lot. But because I was messing around quite a bit, I kind of wasn't exactly helping the situation. Because <laughs> I was just making life more awkward than it needed to be. So yeah, in the end, like I said, I wasn't happy with it, and I just abandoned it. Um, and I'm glad I did, to be honest, because tonight, I'd say, it was not any more fun, but the fact that I then just got two rhinos and was kind of able to demonstrate each gearbox and have a little go with each of them, it was, uh, yeah, it worked out for the best in the end, I reckon. Again, I still don't like... That's the worst thing about having optional diffs, is so many times you're just in low range with the diffs on or whatever, and it moans and says they're about to explode or something. 
But yeah, ticking along through here, um, well, as you can see, even wrenching it kind of all the way through there where I got logs and down that hill, tipping is just not a worry. When I reviewed, like, the actual normal cull of itself, um, it was the hardest truck. Like, I had, it was harder to tip the truck just to be able to demonstrate its tipping point uh, than, yeah, like, flipping it back was mere seconds with the goddamn horse over vehicle, of course. And, uh, yeah, tipping it, though, was, like, was a bit of an effort. <laughs> as well. I normally, I could go left now and kind of cut through what appears to be the best way, kind of go up to that bridge and then take a right there, but I'd like to cut through this lake down here, because this lake's a bit of a joke to be honest, just to cut through the edge, but we'll see how this does. I'm assuming it's got custom tyres. Um, the max size tyres you can have are 61 inch. I've got the 58 inch tyres, but they're like, they're basically the, the Tager custom muds. I think they look quite nice anyway. They suit this thing pretty well. Um, yeah, it's only three inches, so I'll live. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, it just... I personally prefer these tyres. I'm cutting through here, to be fair. There's still a little bit of wheel spin going on. I like as well how high the uh, the active suspension actually raises it up, because, again, that keeps like the chassis plate nice and high and out of the way. And, uh, I don't know, just, it looks quite cool, I think, as you're going over various rocks and that, like, the amount of play in each tyre, so it can kind of, yeah, step individually over each rock, which is kind of good, and it's, I'm trying to think how to explain it, it's like, yeah, if you are driving over one rock, and you haven't got a lot of suspension travel, once you've used up your suspension travel, you've now got to, like, use your engine power to keep climbing over that rock but you now have to lift your entire truck up to get over that rock whereas if there is enough suspension travel and each wheel can just individually bump over it it's a hell of a lot easier to climb over rocks and bumps and ledges and all that rather than like I said having to lift the entire truck each time so yeah with uh, once the suspension's raised up it does work out pretty nicely and in this road train setup it was doing very nice you can see it's a uh, been ticking along pretty well. I only split them apart now just to kind of see. I did uh, yesterday, I hit those bins and I didn't realise that truck chassis thing was there and I actually jumped. Jumped the truck chassis. <laughs> Sadly I haven't got the uh, footage, I don't know why, I just didn't save like the second half of the video, probably because I abandoned it at that point and just didn't save it. Anyway, went around the corner, as you can see, my, uh, my trailer tipped, but you could see it tried to pull me over, I'm still leaning now. And long story short, if this happened on near enough any other truck, I'd probably tip now, most likely. Um, they tried to winch the rear trailer, that was not happening. Eventually the rear trailer popped out and it's kind of done this now, where it's still, the wood's still packed in like the front part of the logging thing, but the uh, trailer's come off. I was wondering at this point, like if I detached the trailer, would they stay packed or not? And basically, I'm going to find out in a minute, but I just thought while I'm here, I'll give it a go at dragging them like this, and I'll wait for the little saving cogs to appear, and then I'll try and detach the trailer, and if it all goes wrong, I'll just turn the game off and restart it. But yeah, well, I mean, it's hauling these logs uh, with no issues. Sort of reminds me a bit like, yeah, the uh, the twice twin steer. I had a similar thing happen to this, but I didn't need to tip it, where it could pack the logs into, like, just the, yeah, one of those sort of log cradle bits. And, uh, yeah, the twice twin steer was dragging the logs, like, behind the truck. A bit like this, really. Which I actually thought was pretty cool. <laughs> Fox was there in the comments saying, oh, just, like, you got to pack the front long log loader thing on the front of the twin steer. But, yeah, I thought, I don't know, I quite liked it. <laughs> Worked out pretty well, so I was messing around with it. This, on the other hand, is, uh, yeah, obviously kind of more accidental. But it's not really having any issues. I mean, there's definitely plenty of power in this thing. It doesn't uh, feel like... It, it. It's definitely bordering on, like, the, the side of being overpowered. But it's not too ridiculous with the gear in. I don't know. It's not too insane with the introduction of power. But, again, you could always knock it down to... I think there is the normal engine, like the KZ-GT. And then I believe there's a tuned version of the KZ-GT. And then... I'm sure this was the one where there's like some special engine that's some like 32.2 litre thing. A beast, I assume, if it's if it's got that many litres. 
Uh, yeah, so here we are at the sawmill, and you'll see again with the gears, right, I stop, put my handbrake on, the thing is still driving itself forward, which now drives me out of the square. Now I'm trying to reverse, and the tyres are kind of fighting each other. And then I just thought by now, sod it, I'll just try. Detach the trailer. Sadly, as soon as I detach the trailer, even though I clearly didn't really need it, it automatically unpacked the logs. And because I didn't have a crane on me, like I just, oh, I knew I'd do that anyway. Just restart the game. Um, back here again, though. You see, I slowed, I let off the throttle as I was rolling into that box. I applied the throttle again, but for some reason, the it started reversing. And it's not the end of the world. You soon get used to it. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's nothing. It's not quite truck breaking. Now, this time those bins went flying, but I decided to <laughs> attempt to jump it again. It wasn't as good this time. The first time I did it, I literally hit those bins and just got some pretty good air and leapt the whole thing. With an 8 slot as well. But it's still, all things considered, it's doing pretty well. When I got off the other side, it might possibly be a tree stump or two. However, this suspension, yeah, is pretty much like anti-tree stump suspension, because once you lift it, it's high enough to where they don't really seem to bother you. I know I was practically out by that point, but... I do believe it does give you enough clearance now to just avoid them. Yeah, you can see the suspension working pretty nicely there. That's what, like, they, each wheel can just step over a rock. It doesn't actually have to lift the whole truck in general. Which makes for a smoother ride, faster, taking less damage. And, yeah, just better in general, really, if, you, if that's achievable. Going up here, it was a bit keen. It was a bit of a big rock, that one kind of beached me right in the perfect spot. Still enough grip to uh, reverse off there. And again, of course, we've got our colour-matched horse on the roof. It works pretty nice. Um, with that little, like, winch set up on the back of the truck, that's just there. It doesn't, like, it's as part of the truck, really. But, yeah, you can sit the rear wheels of the loaf on that, the front wheels of the loaf on the roof, and it lets you pack the vehicle and uh, as you can see, I mean, stays on there like a good one. And because this thing is so difficult to tip, it's pretty, you'd, again, you'd be doing well to try and tip this thing. I'm pretty sure I left a bit of footage in at the end of, like, sort of demonstrating how hard it is to tip. And like I said, if you don't like the overpowered look of it, you can drop the engines down and whatever, so... You could probably make it near enough to the same as, like, the normal clubbing game. Just with more attachments and all the rest of it. Just, yeah, a bit better. More options, all the rest of it. That's what, like, a lot of mods do in many cases. Just a leaner, meaner, better version of the, uh, the trucks we get. And I just wanted to try here. I mean, I drop it into reverse. Basically, this truck's got the high-range gear box. I think it does travel a little bit faster than the other one, but there's not too much in it. But I'm just trying out going like from reverse to auto, low, reverse, low, auto, etc. It never appears to do that thing where it starts juddering around and being a pain in the arse. It generally goes back when I want to go back. So yeah, long story short, I would recommend the high range gearbox. And you do lose like, you don't get the three low range options with that, but you also don't get it, yeah, juddering around and just, like, going a bit mad. See, because I'm moving that truck in front, it, like, locks the loaf in place. It's not just the loaf. It does it with cargo and other stuff. But, yeah, it's a bit weird. But we'll get to that later anyway. That was kind of like the, uh, that first rhino's job, was just to get the wood to this point. Then I could just cash it in, swap it over, load it up, and we're good to go. And overall, I mean, this trailer does work quite well with this club anyway, because the club's got is just a fairly tall truck in general, especially when you raise the suspension up, because it lifts like essentially the front of the trailer up nice and high. Its legs and everything you can still see. I mean, it's even on this, it's not got the best ground clearance, but it's a start. It's more than you get on most. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, cut across this railway bridge, kind of go down there, cut across that river, and then fly up the beach there. And Yeah, flying up the beach wasn't a worry. It was uh, just wanting to see how well it crossed this river up here, really. Which, like I said, I did a little while ago in the uh, 
Azov Bruce. And he handled it. He did his job, even with his big massive chin, he still uh, made it through there. Fuel wise as well, I think it's pretty well balanced, you can see. I've used probably a quarter, so it'll tick along and get plenty of jobs done, but it's not one of them that's like got a thousand litre tank and it uses a litre an hour or something. And I was towing this for like most of the way, so it wouldn't have used a hell of a lot of fuel that way either. I mean, again, I'm certainly not worried about tipping it now. Uh, I've got the tallest snorkel on. It's on like the front A frame pillar thing, whatever it's called, near the windscreen to the right of the truck. And again, though, because this truck sits pretty tall, it's uh, there is trucks with taller snorkels, but this is definitely pretty far up there. <laughs> That's definitely what she said. I'm cutting through there. I mean, it was doing all right, to be fair. It's uh, you get a little bit of wheel spin as I'm just. There's a load of rocks under there. They're just yeah, nothing really grips to them that well. But I never had a feeling like it wasn't going to make it through there. It was just not not the quickest. And again, this was just a uh, quite a little good chance to have a look at the suspension which I was just watching more than where I'm driving which is usually the case but yeah you can see each individual wheel it just looks pretty good to be honest it's quite fun just to watch as it is see how it just stepped oh I had to glitch that one little bit but yeah you can see how it's stepping over each individual little bump but if you actually look at the truck itself except for big jumps like that it's sitting quite yeah like it's not absolutely juddering and shaking it to pieces so overall, it's a, yeah, I think it's a pretty good mod, to be honest. Like I said, the special gearbox is a little bit temperamental, shall we say. But other than that, there's like, I can avoid that with a high range, at least as an alternative. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good. There's been a lot of nice mods turning up recently. I wanted to do as well a video yesterday. I, I was going to do a video on the Mustang, because I wanted to do an, uh, like a specific video on that um, Mudrunner logging crane, but then that was missing from the from the mod list, and then I was going to go on attempt a trial, but I just really wasn't in the mood for one. I had to go on one, and I was like, meh, it's just going to be slow, painfully slow driving through mud and blah blah blah. And then yeah, I wanted to do a video on this, and like I said, after the, it just didn't go well, so we abandoned it. Takes a little while to uh, deliver them all, but once we do, well, again, this is like I've built this before, already done a video, but it's just an excuse to drive this thing around. It only gives you, was it like six and a half grand or something? So, uh, I mean, if you already had eight pieces of wood at that sawmill, it probably wouldn't be that bad, but considering you most likely have to take wood there first and trade it over and all the rest of it, it's a little bit, could have paid out a little bit more than that. Like, more like 10 to 15 grand, I would have thought. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to drive back to the garage. I'm not going to go all the way, but I just left this bit in of flying over this little rock bridge. Again, like, the suspension's also firm enough to where, considering the weight of the truck, you can see there's a few times I kind of land it back down. It doesn't completely delete it. And this bit, I was just pretty, I mean, the loaf, what a goddamn professional. He's balancing on, like, that pole of, like, the, the trailer. I don't even know how he's doing it, it's like clamping on with his balls or something, but it's got that horse of a vehicle. One of the many reasons to get yourself a loaf. I mean look at him. Let's be honest, it's not the first time he's managed to hang on for dear life. He uh he hugged that crane a while ago when we had the Swiss Army dolphin. He was hanging on to that. Like a goddamn professional yet again. Starts leaning a little bit and then uh yeah, when we get down, I j I fancy crossing the river again. Just to see how well this one does. Again, this is well pretty much identical truck, it's just got the special needs gearbox instead of the uh, high range. Life scene we're going into water, is like, oh hell no. Does it some kind of professional SAS army roll off there. He's back on his wheels and we're good to go. And this was just to show you, like, as you've all probably learned the hard way, when you reverse with one of these trailers it can do that and tip you. This is how difficult this truck is to tip and it's not specific to this Rhino. It's just this collab is a beast to try and tip. 
Like I can't make it tip by doing that with the air, and I could just about every other truck, I think, would flip. So yeah, if tipping is a worry for you, that's already a good reason to use this. I was even trying to wedge that in again, though you can see the suspension travels are pretty good. Loaf's having a bit of a lean, but yeah, it just it's pretty bloody hard to tip. Look at the loaf, like whoop, he's back. God damn horse of a vehicle, get yourself a loaf. Went for it again, reversing flat out, like I wasn't it made no odds to me. I was actually more curious, like oh, I'd like to tip it, but it was uh, yeah, doing pretty well. Again, try to wedge a life under there, but... It's like, oh, <laughs> well I'm here. See if the life can handle it on his roof rack. But yeah, I mean, long story short, you can say pretty bloody impossible to tip. And if you do tip it, <laughs> you're doing pretty well. You should probably be happy with yourself that you actually managed to tip it. Even with the loaf, I'm like, reversing in now to try and get it over on even more of an angle. It's just pushing the actual club round. So I told you there's a meaty little horse. Shoving that around. But yeah, it's like it's a beast for not tipping. That was the setup I was going to run yesterday that I just abandoned in the end. I kind of pincered a, a, a Taz on there with the two loafs to pack the wooden barbed wire. Just, yeah, it didn't go well, so abandoned it. But anyway, that's about it for today, though. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, of course, and a rhino, and uh, I'll be back soon.